So, all right, here we are. Um, just to apologies in advance, I've uh, come down with a head cold, so I know my voice is a little hard to hear. I'll try to speak as loudly as I can. Um, so yes, today I'll be talking about reimagining leaderboards from the perspective of pro-social interaction. So our work began in the area of competency-based assessment in medical education. Uh, competency models, which are a big part of medical competency-based assessment, provide a standardized structure for the development of specific abilities, knowledge, and behaviors in a given domain. So one example that's inspired this work is the CanMeds model, which is widely recognized and used by various uh, medical institutions across Canada. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, but essentially it's a flower petal set up and each petal represents a competency and that's the competency model. So competency, uh, I'm sorry, uh, competency-based assessment has a lot of benefits. So you're able to demonstrate different abilities and experiences. Uh, it allows for transferable learning. It uh, provides qualitative as well as the typically quantitative assessment. It's student-centric and it's dynamic and contextual. Uh, however, a number of critics have pointed out some negative aspects, such as a reliance on legislated standards, a lack of empirical validation, and the fact that it's really difficult actually for people to self-assess their abilities. So our goal was to create a competency-based system that tackles these criticisms. We developed Burge, uh, which is an e-portfolio that revolves around competency model visualizations, self and peer assessment, and a, dy and a dynamic rubric. So the idea is that it supports emergent competencies while still being bounded by curricular constraints and legislated standards. So on the right here is an early example of our first prototype with the student at the center. The way it works is the topmost layer are the core competencies or the standard competencies and the bottommost layer are the emergent competencies that the student or their peers or mentors or other people in the system can create that come out of experiences <coughs> that aren't addressed by the core competencies. So we realized that as a social visualization system, Verge is well equipped for social gamification and is potentially a pro-social leaderboard that encourages participants to act in the interest of others. Now first up, what are leaderboards? So our definition is that they are a performance comparison element. They're used to map progress and incite action through quantitative um, and qualitative, or sorry, quantitative comparison and competition. So there's a number of different types. There's a single player type where you're looking at your own scores over time comparing to yourself. Uh, there's multi uh, multiplayer varieties. Um, sorry, it's a bit mass there, but basically where you're being compared towards high performing peers, people at the top of the ladder, or near performing pe peers, people that are around you. Um, there's been some research, for instance, by Butler that shows that leaderboards do affect this experience of fun. Um, but what this research found was that winning and losing polarizes responses. So this raises the question of how can we craft leaderboards that engage uh, different types of people and that are inclusive. So a pro-social setup has the potential to promote positive social relationships and greater overall achievement than competitive approaches. And we use social game mechanics to develop key elements for our social leaderboard approach. So a lot of these are going to look familiar. Um, essentially, we're looking at them from a social perspective. So status integrate, indicates the degree of collaborative output. It's meaningfully recognizes, uh, recognizing uh, contributions that you make to other people's portfolios and that they make to yours. Uh, there's this idea of scarcity. So you can only build up your portfolio as you contribute to other people's portfolios. Um, we're also using karma points, so you can freely give these away based on what you perceive to be the quality of the contributions that you receive. And finally, we're reimagining our competency model interactive visualization as a group leaderboard um, that's qualitative as well as quantitative. It's cumulative and cohort-wide. 
So instead of a single user's progress over time, the model now represents a qualitative overview of the competency makeup of the entire cohort. So the student at the center has been replaced by a multi-user icon representing the entire cohort. Now clicking on one of the competency slices reveals the users who have acquired and contributed portfolio items. Uh, for simplicity, I just listed one here. So you can see uh, the first item that's selected uh, has been contributed by another user who's received karma points for this contribution. Um, this, pre this particular item not only relates to the selected competency, but another core competency as well as an emergent competency. Um, that's just a brief overview. So there are a number of potential issues and open questions about this approach. First off, users must be invested in the goal of developing their and others' portfolios. We hope that enrollment in the program and being part of a cohort will provide that initial investment. Uh, peers may not always be able to assess or contribute to portfolios. Um, we expect that cohorts are likely to have the same opportunities or similar opportunities. On top of that, sharing portfolio items in this way can give underperforming peers ideas on how to improve and get experience in different areas. Uh, finally, our, our big important question is, is this still a leaderboard or is it just a visualization? Well, going back to our definition, it is a, compar a performance comparison element. It maps progress and performance and it encourages action. Um, the big differences, the key differences from traditional approaches aside from the visual makeup are that it's qualitative, it provides qualitative information, and it also treats a group as a single user. So instead of one user comparing performance over time, um, it's a cohort comparing their collective performance over time. Finally, uh, this hasn't been empirically validated yet. We're hoping that we'll uh, go through some user testing following implement implementation within the next year. And that's it. So I'd love to hear any questions and comments. Thank you.